Hi everybody! Welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about some of my pet hates that I have. Um, you know, hates that I don't need to have, but I nourish and keep there because, well... Actually, it's not even a question of need. I mean, it's hard not to have these certain pet hates considering there's always these triggers that I experience on a daily basis that are making me hate these things. And the things I hate, my particular pet hates are about, in particular, uh, the etiquette of the uh, public transport system and the people in particular who use that system and how people go about their ways moving through the city and navigating around each other. Um, there's a few pet hates and a few frustrations which occur all the time, every day. Same silly mistakes and you know stupid decisions and lack of right decisions being made. And I thought I'd shoot a little video on it, and it's a bit of a cathartic, you know, release for me right now, just, just sharing this, so, so let's get into it, shall we? Pet hate number one, I hate it, absolutely hate it to bits, when, you know, there's a bus that's just pulling up to stop, you know, and as the process goes, you know, when the doors open, some people get off, and some people come on, yeah? Um, but you always get, you know, these people that just stand, in front of the doors of the bus, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to focus on my part of the process because I need to go places and then don't actually think about the other half of the process, the two-way street, and about the other people that need to get off. It's just all about them and they're that really ignorant kind of selfish, you know, way about, you know, going about their business. And it's annoying, like, even when there's people are getting backed up, they're finally like, oh, oh, this, I'm in the way, I have to move, I have to move. And it's like, really? You, how many times have you been catching these fucking things, like, and each time you need to be reminded because you are so, you know, self-absorbed in your own little, like, where you're going, that you forget entirely about everyone else in the world and everyone else on the bus that also was going places. You're not the only one going places, you know. Pet hate number two, besides people that stand in front of buses when the doors open. Uh, trains, every morning when I catch the six o'clock train, or seven o'clock train, um, it's, 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 it's packed. It's packed like a fucking sardine can and there's no room to, to breathe, really, without feeling self-conscious and making sure that you properly brush your teeth and have a breath mint on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally. And there's always, when you look in the carriage, there's always, just in the middle of the carriages, because, you know, everyone just clusters around the entrance and the pole there, and it's hard to get past that wall. And it's like climbing the Game of Thrones wall, you know, it's like, it's quite a feat. Um, there's always this fucking centre part of the carriages, which are totally free, and there's usually two or three dawdlers just standing there, just like flailing their arms, like, yeah, I'm just chilling, I'm just, you know. And they've got all the space in the world, and you... It, it sucks that every every time I personally get on the train and this happens, I push my way through the people that are blocking uh, the path for everyone else to move to the back of the line and say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, push my way through. As soon as I get to the bit where there's space, I'm like, oh, wow, look, there's space here. Huh, who would have thought? And I say that. I say, oh, wow, look, space. You know, and hopefully, and I'm not going to get my hopes too high, okay, but hopefully sooner or later it catches on and people start to actually realize, oh fuck, it's not just about me. These people are trying to get on, and I'm in the way. There's all that space over there which I know about. I'm not just gonna ignore that. I'm not just gonna think, well, tough luck, buddy. You're gonna have to stick your face in some stranger's armpit, you know, because I'm where I need to be right now, and that's cool. Like, hopefully people will be like, all right, well, I'll just move where there's space, and I'll still have space. Everyone will have space, and no one will have to stick their faces in anyone's armpit. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be like getting too close to people you don't want to or finding yourself, you know, becoming bonded with people inadvertently. <laughs> so that's that's another pet hate. So another pet hate um, in terms of navigation and people just being ignorant of everyone else around them, you know, and respectful. And it's just really bad etiquette. Um, when you're walking through the street and there's like a number of, you know, fucking people walking in groups, I'm talking about like groups of fucking three, four, five plus people. And they're like fucking wars on wheels just rolling down the roads. Top them on, fellas. See, these guys get the idea. They're creating space. If any cars wanted to come, they totally move for them. 
and they'd better if, they, if, they, if their self-preservation was an interest. But people in the city, man, they just walk in these wars and they link arms with their friends and fucking, they don't move for anyone. And they, they think, oh yeah, we've got a big league, we've got a big group, a big gang here. Even people that are, don't even have that gang mentality, they just think because they're in a group and they're all in together in their little clique, that they're so cool and they radiate this awesomeness that everyone else simply has to move around them like it's a fucking disco uh, scene in some Grease-like movie and everyone, you know, forms a circle around the dancers and claps their hands and dances along and, you know, cheers for the people in the middle stealing the spotlight. I mean, there is no spotlight just because you're in a group of friends, even if they're attractive friends, even if it's majority breasts and less dick, doesn't give you super privileges or any privileges. You know, you can't just walk wherever and expect everyone else to move around you. So, there's another pet hate. Um, another pet hate in terms of people walking around is, you know, people that don't look before they start turning into you. You know what I mean? It's like if they were in a car, they would literally just smash into whoever's next to them and happens to be in the way of where they want to go. You know, they don't check their blind spot. They don't even indicate. It's just like, oh, I'm going this way. Oh, I'm going this way now. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. You know what I mean? I don't want to be racist, but usually the people that stand in front of the buses and the people that do just walk wherever they're walking without even checking to see if you're beside them or behind them, a lot of the time they tend to be Asian. And maybe that's because there's a lot of Asians in Australia. So maybe it's just a statistic thing. It's bound to be like that. Um, who knows? You know what I mean? But it's annoying when I'm walking and you get the diagonal walkers, you know, the ones that walk diagonally. And it's easier. Like me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a clear, th straightforward thinking guy. You know, I work, I go on my horizontal axis, my vertical axis. Um, I make it pretty predictable where I'm going. You know, it's pretty orderly. It's not just like, oh, I'm going over here now, cutting through the path of all these other people. You know what I mean? And if you're slow, God forbid if you're slow, then fuck, you know? Then be mindful, stick to, stick to the sides of wherever you're walking. If you're walking by shops, go to the side, don't take up all the space in the middle of a semi-narrow pathway because, I don't know, you feel like you're Gina Reinhardt and you're somehow entitled above everyone else, just naturally. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's another pet hate. So many, so many of them now, I didn't realize I had such a such a, a large pen full of pet hate, you know. Um, what was it? One just one that just came to mind when you're in town. Oh, oh I'm trying to remember now. People, people, people that take up too much space. I'm gonna have to get back to you on this. Give me a sec. All right, I just remembered when you're going up the elevator uh, es escalator, right? And generally, everyone stands to the left. And if for whatever reason you're in a rush, maybe you're running late for your bus or for work, you know, you can take the, the right-hand passage up the escalator, which is usually free, half the time. And that way, you know, you don't have to take the lazy route. I mean, to me, I think the escalators were there to make things easier for us. You can get to where you're going quicker, you know what I mean? But a lot of people just rely on it 100% because they're lazy and it's super convenient and they don't want to do any work. I always walk up the steps. And every now and then you get like one person that will be, there'll be a person on the left and then three steps up, there'll be another person on the left and they're right in the middle of those two. So it's a full wall. On the right side, there's usually a person just standing there and blocking your path. So if you're on a rush, tough luck. And it's especially and doubly frustrating if you're running late for your train and it's got one minute left and everyone's on the left so you can run down to the side of the escalator. And, you know, once again, the same thing. It's blocked and no one moves for you. And you miss your train because of these ignorant quits. Got to, got to watch my language. Got some kids over here. So, very frustrating. A few pet hates there. And I think it all comes down to the core principle of ignorance. And people just, you know, maybe, maybe it's just the whole consumerist buzz. Maybe people just get a bit overwhelmed when they're in the shopping districts. And they're like, ooh, so many things to buy. Where am I going? I don't know even where I'm going. I don't even know why I'm here, but I'm here in a shop. I'm here in a shop. And they're, they're just looking for opportunities maybe. I don't know. And they're not really thinking straight. They just know that they're there to shop. 
and, that's, and end up spending half their money and regretting it later, you know. Maybe I'm speaking from self-experience right there, but... I don't know, but it's it's ignorance, and it's, it's really, it's disrespect. It's good to be considerate of your fellow man in your community, and... It's the simple things, man. Like, if you're moving around, just be aware of what's around you. You're not the only person or, like, planet in the universe and everything else just orbits around you. You're not a sun, yeah? Like, the sun does the orbiting, does it? I don't know, man. I, I'm astrologically retarded with all that stuff. But when it comes to people, I think my observations ring true. That there are a lot of inconveniences and frustrations that are unnecessarily caused. I mean, we have enough frustration in the world. We all do things that we don't want to do, most of us, you know, every day, day in, day out. And it makes that little bit easier, you know, if everyone just, I don't know, tries to use their head a bit more and just be a little bit more aware, you know, a little bit more considerate. And then our days will be a little bit more smoother and we'll be a lot more appreciative overall. That's my food for the thought right now. And uh, feel free to check out the other Food for Thoughts, Walking and Talking with Phoenixes, available on this channel. Otherwise, look behind you! Don't bump into that guy! Look! Look! God damn it!